What we have here is we have two inequalities. We have y is greater than or equal to negative 5 and x is greater than or equal to positive 1. So we're going to follow steps. And the first step is to write each of these as an equation because we have to graph the line part first. So I'm, and I'm going to graph them in different colors. I'm going to graph this in blue and this in magenta because people who can't see red can still see magenta because it's got so much blue in it. All right, so here we go. We are going to work on y is greater than or equal to negative 5 first by changing it to y equals negative 5. Okay, so I'll make an x and a y. Whoop. An x and a y chart, I'm only going to choose two points. Let's see, y must be negative 5, so negative 5, negative 5, and x can be anything I want it to be. Because there's no x in here, it's free. Of, I'm, I am free to choose any numbers I want. So I believe in easy numbers when I have a choice. So how about x equals 0 and x equals 2? Might as well. All right, so that gives me two points. 0, negative 5, and 2, negative 5. So here we go. I'm going to plot those. 0, negative 5, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. x is 0, y is negative 5, and 2, negative 5. I come out 1, 2, and then down 5. And that permits me to graph my line, which I'm going to do now with any luck at all. So this is the line y equals negative 5. Now I'm done graphing the line. The easiest thing to do is to follow this. I should have written step 1. And now to do step 2. I choose a test point. Test point. And the test point can be any point not on the blue line, any point in the universe. So I might as well choose. So let's see, how about, you can even close your eyes. How about this? I don't even know what that is. This is going to be my test point. Let's see. One, two, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six. So let me write that down. Negative six on the x axis. And one, two, three, four, five, six. What do you know? Six on the y axis. So negative six, six is my test point. Where negative six is the x coordinate and positive six is the y coordinate. Once I've chosen my test point, and I'm hoping you remember a little bit of this vaguely, we'll have step three. Test the test point. So 
So test the test point. Here's how we test it. We go back to the original inequality. Y is greater than or equal to five. Now, here's why. There's no X, but here's why. Y equals six. So if I put six in, oh, that's negative five, isn't it? There you go, negative five, yes. Six is greater than or equal to negative five. That's definitely true. Six dollars is more than being five dollars in debt. So six is greater than five, negative five, or even five, but negative five, and that's true. Now, what is the great deal about this? Oops, this being true. And here's the big deal. This is a true for the blue line. I'm going to shade in the direction of the true, because if this point on this side of the blue line gives me a true, so will every other point on this side, any point on this side of the blue line. So I shade. And here I'm going to shade. It's not very big, but why don't I just do it like this? You can do a much better job. See, I, I want to make sure, though, that this is colored in as well. Okay, so here's our blue, here's our blue. And that's all I have to do. If I were just graphing one of these, I would have my answer right there. What this says visually is that all this area is the solution to y is greater than or equal to negative five. but I'm not just graphing one, I'm graphing two. So, I now am going to go over somewhere else and do the same thing with X is greater than, let's go over here, X is greater than or equal to positive one. I make an X and a Y chart. So I can come up with two points fast and easy. Ah, ah, I, I, no, I did it in the wrong order. Watch now. This should have been equals because all I care about right now is graphing the line. So I'm going to get an eraser there, and then I'll put an equal sign. All I care about right now is the line. So now X has to be one. So one, one. And Y can be anything I want it to be. Um, negative three and positive two. I already used two, didn't I? There's no reason I can't use it, but let's use five. OK, so these are my two points. That I'm going to plot. One negative three. And one. Five. OK, I can do that. So X is one. Here I start at the center, I go to X equals one. Y is negative one, negative two, negative three. And here, X is one, Y is five. X is one, Y is one, two, three, four, five. So this is five. 
this is one. Well, that won't work because I'm going to be graphing a line through it. So I'll wait. That's what I'll do. I'll wait. OK, now let's see if this works. I was having trouble with the lines earlier. OK. Here's a point. A line that goes through these two points that I plotted. Right, and this is negative three. Whoops. OK, now try not to think about the blue line or the blue shading. All that matters right now is the red line or the magenta line. So step two is choose a test point. And I could choose something over here. Yeah, that's too big. Um, how about should I choose there or there? I don't know. Let's choose here. We'll live dangerously. This is going to be our test point. So here's x equals 0, x equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8. OK. y equals 1. Two, three. Oops. I came up three. Wait a minute. No. X equals eight. Y equals negative three. So that's not it. That's negative two. Okay. All right. Don't get mad. What am I doing? X equals X equals, all right, I graphed it. Now my test point is what? Well, I'm going to choose it here. Fate wants it there. Okay, doesn't matter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, nine. And negative one, negative two. OK, now everything is OK. This is not a 7, it looks like it. This is a 9. And this is a negative 2. Huh, OK, here we go. 9, negative 2, that's my test point. And now I test my test point. Um, and so I go back up here, X is greater than or equal to 1. Since X is 9, I put a 9 in for X, and that's going to be true, isn't it? That's a point on this side of the magenta line. So I'm going to shade over here. All the way up and down forever, except I don't want to go down there. So. Now. We're done graphing. Now. We look at the graph and we say, aha, aha, this is the solution to the inequality. Everything to the right of the magenta line and up from the blue line, because that's where the blue and the magenta. Overlap. Okay. 
So now this is what you do when you get to my math lab. You already have everything you need to graph. This would be just a very rough drawing on your paper. Um, on my math lab, you have these, uh, you're able to do it like I did it. Um, you've got two points, so you graph the line. You don't shade. You already know what the answer is. Come over here. You've got your two points, one negative three, one five, and you graph this line. Then you go to the toolbar and you grab yourself a little paint bucket, click on the paint bucket, and then click on where, where the um, uh, two colors on your little, little casual graph on your paper Click on the on this area right here and it will automatically shade probably in yellow. And that's the graphing part. But there's another question. Find the coordinates of the vertices. Actually, there's only one vertex, so this should have said. Whenever you've got two lines, you've got only one vertex, if you have a vertex at all. So this should not be vertices, that's plural. This is going to be vertex. And as it is, this is going to be pretty easy. Why? Because you've already got your coordinates. How? Well, you're going to have, this is going to be right here. This is the vertex. Where the blue and the, the magenta line cross. X, Y. And notice it's just the lines we care about, not the shading. You will care about the shading. If you had more than two lines, you would care about the shading, but, but not for two lines. So what you care about is where the lines cross. Um, you've already got, when you look at the equation of your lines, here you've got y equals negative five. So y equals negative five. Here you've got x equals one, so x equals one. And that is the point where the two lines cross. That's called the vertex. It does get more complicated when you've got more than two lines, but we're only dealing with two lines. Any questions? I don't hear anything. So if not, I'll go on and do it again. We're going to graph the system of inequalities and then the second question that would pop up would say find the vertex. So I put them both together there. Whoops, okay. I have, let's see, I'll do this in blue. Whoops. And then, I don't know, should I switch to green? Let's switch to green and see if that's better. So here we go. We've got X is less than or equal to three. So we only work with an equals for the first step. So X equals three. Then you make an X and a Y chart. And I have not yet used these lines to make a better X and Y chart. Why don't I do that? Because I'm used to freehanding it. All right. X, Y, right here. Boom. Boom. Okay, much neater now. 
Now I know X has to be three. Y can be anything. So how about negative one? And zero. Okay, so those are my two points. Three, negative one. And three, zero. So I'll plot the points. Start at the center. One, two, three. There's X. Negative one is Y. So here's three. Here's negative one. And three zero, oh, is just right here on the X axis. So there we go. We've got one line right on top of another. So once again, I have a vertical line, and this is the vertical line, something I forgot to do before. It's always a good idea when you're doing this on your paper to go ahead and write the name of the line you're dealing with. So that was step one. Step two, find a test point. A test point. Well, I'm a, I want to choose the easiest one because I want you to see this. Zero, zero. This is zero, zero. The very center of the graph. Or the very center of the grid, I should say. Okay, zero, zero is the easiest test point in the whole wide world. You'll see why in a minute. When you can use it, or you can just choose any old point like I was doing up, up above. Okay, so here we're going, going to test our test point. Step three. All right, X is less than or equal to three, and that's a positive three. Okay, here's X. Here's Y on the test point, zero. Zero is less than or equal to three. And we know that's true. So our test point there gives us a true for the blue line. So I will shade on the true side of the line. So what I want to do is I want to make that bigger. So I don't have to make as many strokes. Um, OK, so. There, see isn't that better? Yeah. I could like make it 60 or something. Okay, and that's shading, I mean, if we were infinite beings, we would shade to infinity, okay? Negative infinity. Now we've got another line. We're gonna make it green. Let's come over here. Why, oops, ah, caught in the act. All right, there we go. Green. Here's our inequality. Y is greater than or equal to five minus two X, but I'm only interested in the line right now, so I'm going to write Y equals five minus two X, and I prefer to write that correctly with just because I want to, y equals negative 2x plus 5. That's the line. 
So I'm going to make a real live XY chart, the kind I know how to do so well. All right, if X is zero, that'll give you negative two times zero, which is zero. So you'll be left with five. Y is five. If X is zero, Y is five. Now, if Y is zero, I don't wanna do that. So because I would move negative five over there, Y would be zero. I would have a fraction answer. And while that's fine on paper, my math lab would not appreciate it. So we're gonna do this instead. When I have a line in uh, Y equals MX plus B form, all I have to do is choose any number, preferably easy, for X. So suppose I say, okay, what if X is two? Then I'll have Y equals negative two times two plus five. That'll be negative four plus five. That'll be positive one. So Y will equal positive one if X equals two. So if X is two, Y is one. So I'm going to um, 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 plot the green points now, zero five, one, two, three, four, five. And two, one. That's one, two, one. And I'll make this a little bigger. Not three, but Two, two, I said. There. Gotta yell. Okay, so I am going to attempt to draw a fairly decent line that connects the points and then, well, keeps going forever. But that looks like forever to me. And then I'll go the other way. Now this is the tricky part right here. But that's not too bad. Whoop, whoop. Oh. See, of course I messed it up, but I'm gonna leave it cause it's okay. Um, all right, so now this line is Y equals I'm going to say negative 2x plus 5. So here we have our two lines. We have y equals negative 2x plus 5, and x equals 3. So we're going to be finding that point for a vertex later, but right now I still have to find which side of the green line to shade on because the shading where they overlap is the solution to the linear inequality. All right, so, um, now, looking only at trying to look only at the green line, I need to choose a point on one side or the other of the green line and pretend the blue line and the blue shading aren't there. So again, why not zero, zero? Cause it's so easy. Let's make zero, zero our test point for the green line. Zero, zero. So my test point is going to be test point Zero, zero. 
And now I go back to the original inequality, might as well go back to y equals five minus two x, or this, which is the same thing, but you know, you can only argue so long. Y is greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to five minus two x. Now check this out. We have an x coordinate that will go in the x and a y coordinate that will go in the y. So, let's scroll this up. Y, y, zero. Y is zero. Greater than or equal to five minus two times zero. 2 times 0, negative 2 times 0 is 0. So I'm making this statement that 0 is greater than or equal to 5. Now let me make absolutely sure that's a positive 5. It is. You know that's not true. This is false. Our test point has failed us. So, what do you do now? You have an F here, not a T, an F. All that means is all of these points on the left side of the green line will give it a false. But it also means that all the points on the other side will give us a true. So it still works for us. We'll just shade the other side. Whoa. Okay, and let me erase this one. Be a little more careful. <laughs> now. There. Okay. Notice that the only places now the blue is there, but you can't see it. So I need to make this less opaque, but it's too late now. So let's just put our blue back where it was. And we'll be able to see for sure where the overlap is because it's darker. This area in here is the solution to the system of linear inequalities. So what does that mean for us? Well, we've got to put all this in my, in my math lab. So to graph the first line, you already have your two points. That's all you need in my math lab to graph a line. Then you come over here. You've got your two points here. I didn't write them as points, so let me do that now. Zero, five and two, one. You've got those two points to graph the green line. It won't be green in my math lab, I don't think, but um, whatever, okay? And then you know the answer. You know, you know the solution to the system, which is going to be the area where the two colors overlap. So you'll click on your paint bucket, you'll click on this slice of the pie right there, and it will be the only shaded area. And once you do that, you check your answer, you're told fantastic, or good job, or one of the number of different positive things that my math lab tells you. 
and then, and then you find that point, which it's true, you can probably guess at, but let's make absolutely sure. Okay, we're going to get the equations of our two lines together here. X equals three and Y equals five minus two X. We're going to solve the system just like we solved systems yesterday. Only this is really easy because X is only going to be three, which means that X is a three. So instead of using elimination, what, which is what I usually use, I'm going to use substitution. Y equals five minus two times three. Y equals five minus six, which is negative one, which means our vertex is three, negative one. But let's look and make sure. Does that look like the right answer? Well, here's three and there's negative one. So yes, in this case, the vertex was really predictable just by looking at your graph in my math lab. If this is just a rough graph on a piece of plain paper, you won't know for sure. But once you put it into my math lab, you should be fairly sure just by looking that uh, your graph is going to, your vertex is going to be three negative one. Okay, shall we move on? Yeah, let's do it. Now notice this is a system, it's going to be really easy to find the vertex by elimination. Really super easy, although you can also use substitution. But right now, let's go ahead and I'm so predictable, I am going to shade this in blue, draw it in blue, and I'm going to go back to magenta, this in magenta. So here we go. X plus Y equals two. So I'm graphing the line. So here's step one. I make an X and a Y chart. If X is zero, you don't have to use my numbers. I'm just kind of going for an easy one. If X is zero, Y is two. If Y is zero, then you've got X is two. So, zero two is right there. And two zero is right here. And so I draw a line through these two points. Isn't that wonderful? Okay, well, there's plenty of room for me to see that 2, 2 is not on the line. So I'm going to use that as my test point. I mean, 0, 0. <laughs> 0, 0. I could use 2, 2. Maybe I should use 2, 2. Maybe that's a little voice telling me, use 2-2. Two, two. All right. How about 
two, two. I'm going to use that as my test point instead. Right, so two. The test point is two, two. And step three, I test the test point, go back to my original inequality, x plus y equals, uh, 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 is less than or equal to two. I put a two here for x plus a two for y, and I'm saying that's less than or equal to two so that four is less than or equal to two, you know that's false. False. If I had used zero, zero, I would have gotten a true. I shade on the true side. Since this is the false side, that leaves the true side over here. Now we're going to graph x minus y equals five. Now, where can I get enough room for that? I think I'm gonna go up here and hope that this works out. x minus y equals five. x, y chart. Now, if X is zero, we're going to have zero minus Y, and I'm gonna to have to actually work this out. So negative one Y equals five. Divide both sides by negative one, negative one. Cancel, 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 cancel. Y equals negative five. So if X is zero, Y is negative five. And if Y is zero, well, that's no problem at all. That'll be X minus zero equals five. So X is five positive five. All right, so written as points. I didn't do it over there either. Um, okay, so five zero is one, two, three, four, five. Five zero. And zero negative five is one, two, three, four, five down, negative five. And I didn't, you really need to do this. You really need to label your lines. Um, and finding the vertex is the reason. It makes it easier. X plus Y equals two. Okay, now we're about to graph the magenta line. No, okay. <laughs> okay, and Very good. 
I am going to choose zero, 00 this time as my test point. Oh, oh. There we go. Okay, so zero, 00. That's my test point. So I'm going to use this now. X minus Y is less than or equal to five. Did I write it down? No, I didn't. You see that the more used to doing this you are, the quicker you can go. But sometimes you can outsmart yourself by being too quick. So what have we got here? X minus Y is less than or equal to five. So zero minus zero, because my test point is zero, zero, is less than or equal to five. Zero is less than or equal to five. And that is true. For the magenta line. So that means I'm gonna shade that way. Okay, so. I have the best luck, I think, with 29. And we're going to make it very easy to see through. I hope. Okay, then it's going to be like pink. Blech. Okay. Now, so this way, this way. And it's true, it's over here too. So there you go, but you can see where the overlap is. So you graph, ah, uh, ah, uh, you graph the blue line, you graph the magenta line, you drag your little paint bucket in to where the, uh, the two colors overlap. Um, yes, okay, I want to write the name of the line, which is X minus Y is less, uh, uh equals, because we're just dealing with the line five. Okay, now, oh, look at this, look at this. We cannot guess what that is. We're gonna have to actually work it out. Ooh, life gets more exciting. Let's do it. So the vertex. I use just the equations of the two lines. X plus Y equals two and X minus Y equals five. I'm going to use elimination this time because look at how the y's are just already set up to be eliminated. x plus x is 2x, y minus y is 0, 2x plus 0 equals 7. So 2x <clears throat> equals 7. Divide by 2, divide by 2, X equals seven over two. Got to stick with fractions. You can't see that, but underneath the answer box, it says answer with integers or fractions. So now we can go to either line and substitute seven over two, or we can use elimination again so if you don't want to play with fractions, we can use elimination again. Let's do that. Here we eliminated the Y's. Next time we're going to eliminate the X's. So I'm going to go in here. 
or maybe I'll go in here. OK, hmm, I should go in here. All right, X plus Y equals 2 and X minus Y equals 5. And this time I am going to multiply row 2 by negative 1. So that I have. Here's line one, here's line two. I'm going to call it row one and row two. And my, my strategy is to add row one just as it is to row two multiplied by negative one. So negative one times row two. And this is what I'll get x plus y equals 2 and negative x plus y equals negative 5 because I multiplied everything in row 2 by negative 1. And now I'm going to add vertically x minus x is 0, y plus y is 2y, so 0 plus 2y equals 2 minus 5, which is negative 3. So 2y equals negative 3. And y, the, oh, let's see, I'll divide by 2 and divide by 2 so that cancel, cancel, y equals negative three over two. That still does not look good. Don't do that. Oh, I'm just getting rid of the blue, okay. Let's write it over here. Because I don't want it to get too jumbled up. Y equals negative three over Two. Now what that means is this point is seven over two, comma, negative three over two. And that's your vertex. If this had been drawn vertically, that would that would be moved a little bit more toward the very middle of this square. But I'm just a human. We have one more to go. You see how I'm doing the same steps over and over again though. Over and over again. So by now you should really be getting the hang of it and saying to yourself, oh my gosh, that is so easy. Let me hurry up and do, I think there are four or five homework problems. But there are multiple steps to each. Okay, here we go. Oh, should I switch around? No, because I don't want to. I've got to lose. I've got a winning thing going. I don't want it to become a losing thing. OK. So here we are, but I changed to an equal sign. Step one, because I'm just graphing the line. 7y minus x is less than or equal to, uh, 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 uh. See, sometimes you have to yell at yourself. Equals seven. Okay. Well, let's give her a try. X, Y, and I think this is easier than I'm afraid it will be. For instance, if X is zero, we'll have 7y minus 0 equals 7. So we'll have 7y equals 7. 
And when we divide both sides by seven, we'll have y equals one. That's if x is zero. Now, if y is zero, we'll have seven times zero minus x, that's a minus sign, minus x equals seven. So zero minus one x equals seven, which leaves me with negative one x equals seven. And I made my little doohickey too big and it looks like it could be a seven, so let's just get rid of it. There. And then I'll divide both sides by negative one, negative one, and that means x equals negative seven. Double checking to make sure. Yes, okay, so negative Seven. I better write those those uh, numbers down. Separate this. Still though. Okay, so the points that I am going to plot are zero one and negative seven zero. Okay, so wait a minute. Yes, okay, I was just kind of checking. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's negative seven. So here's where negative seven is negative seven, zero, and here is where zero, one is. So I'm going to graph a line. No, I'm not. I'm going to graph a line. Okay, and this is 7y minus x equals 7. Now, test point and the truth, the truth is whenever I can, I use the point zero, zero as my test point. So my test point, number two, my test point's going to be two, two, is, no it's not, my test point is zero, zero. Now, three, I test the test point so that seven y minus x, x, equals seven, zero for x, zero for y, seven times zero, minus zero e uh, um, is less than or equal to seven. Zero is less than or equal to seven. And that's true. So for the blue line, I get a true in the test point, and that means boom, 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 boom. Uh, isn't this fun? 
This is so exciting, I know. That shouldn't have gone up there like that, but pretend you don't see it. Okay. There now. All right, so. See, I have plenty of room now. But I really would rather stay on this sheet of paper. So green, green, greeny. Now we go to one. Y plus three X equals negative four. OK, now. Look at this. Now, if we let Y, e uh -uh. if we let X equals zero, there's no problem. I'll have Y equals negative four. Easy peasy. But what happens if Y equals zero? I'll have three X equals negative four and I'll have a fraction, which I try to avoid. So I'm going to change this to slope intercept form. Y equals negative three X because I have to subtract three X from both sides of this equation minus because of the negative four. Now I can choose any number I want for X. I could choose something easy, easy. How about two? X equals two. So I'll have Y equals negative three times two minus four. That'll be negative six minus four. That'll be negative 10. Well, that is a little large, but we can manage it. Okay. So if X is two, Y is negative 10. Okay, so. Zero, negative four. Is one, two, three, four, right here. And. Two, negative 10. That's one, two, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Checking to make sure. Negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, negative nine, negative 10. And I draw my line. Or I don't. Try again. Okay. And once again, I can choose zero, zero because the green line does not go through zero, zero. See, that's the Oh, the lazy person's way to do math, I suppose. Zero, zero is my test point there. So I'll write it down. Two, test point. Zero, zero. Be careful of when you cannot use it. If this green line had gone through zero, zero, I could not use zero, zero. Or if the blue line had gone through zero, zero, I could not use zero, zero. So keep that in mind. Now three, I'm going to test the test point with the inequality y plus three x is greater than or equal to negative four zero plus zero, that's gonna be zero, is greater than or equal to negative four, and that happens to be true. Zero is not greater than four, but it is greater than negative four. 
So that happens to be true. So zero, zero gives us a true for the greenie. Boom, and here's, you can already see, that's where the colors overlap. And so that's where I would drag my, my paint bucket. And now, now is the really hard part for this particular problem. And so we are going to be forced to go to the next sheet of paper. And all right, right here at the top. No, I'm not. I'm electronic here, digital. I'm just gonna move these down here to find the vertex. Ooh, that's big. We'll make it smaller. There, that's good enough. Is that good enough? That's good enough. Okay, so now I am, I think, oh, I need to change it to equal signs anyway. So, all right, row one or line one is going to be seven Y minus X equals seven. And row two is going to be y. It's not going to be, it is 3x equals negative 4. Okay, here's my strategy. You might have a different strategy. I am going to multiply row one by three. Then I'll have a negative three. The negative's already there. I'll have a th negative three here. Negative three X plus three X is zero. I'll be zeroing out my X's. I'll add that to row two. Okay, so three times row one. 3 times 7 is 21, so 21y minus 3x equals 21. And row 2, we're not going to multiply anything by that. It's going to stay the same. So this is y, or 1y, plus 3x equals negative 4. Okay, so we'll have 22y uh, minus 3x plus 3x is 0, plus 0, equals 21 minus 4 is 17. So we have 22y equals 17, divide by 22, Divide by 22. Boom, boom. So y equals 17 over 22. That's not really nice, is it? Let's take a look at the graph. All right, the y is a positive number. And 17 over 22 is not quite 1. And since one is up there on the line, uh, on the, the grid line, this is almost at positive one in the y direction. So that looks like it, it could be correct. Now, okay, so I've got the y. Now we go for the x. That means I have to eliminate the y's. So I am going to add row one and not change it. I'm going to add it to negative 7 times row 2. That will give me 7y minus 7y. So here we go. 
row one is, yeah, I'm eliminating the y. 7y minus 1x equals 7. And negative 7 times row 2. Okay, this is a 1y, so negative 7 times 1 is negative 7. We'll have negative 7y. Negative 7 times positive 3 is negative 21x. Negative 7 times negative 4 is positive 28. Yeah, it's true. Okay. 7y minus 7y is 0. Negative 1x plus negative 21x is negative, or minus in this case, temporarily, 22x equals, oh my goodness, 35. So negative 22x equals 35. 7 plus 8 is 15, carry the 1. Yeah, it's, that's right. 35. Divide by negative 22. Divide by negative 22. Boom, 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 boom. So I will have, yeah, okay, that could be correct. X equals negative 35 over 22. Now let's see why that looks like it could be correct. This, the numerator is bigger than the denominator. So this number is bigger than, well, it's not bigger than, it's, it's more to the left than negative one. Okay, but it's not all the way to negative two. So that looks like it could be correct for the X's. So we're, <laughs> We're at the end, so I'm going to make a dangerous assumption that I'm correct. Negative 35 over 22, 17 over 22. That looks correct. I was worried the denominators would be different, but they're not, they're the same. They don't absolutely have to be the same, but this is beautiful, I'm certain. I am willing to be certain that this is correct. And that's the end for today. Now go make a snow angel.